Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. A year ago this evening, she was one of the most powerful Democrats in America. Now she is one of the most despised within her own party. Donna Brazile has been around an awfully long time. She ran Al Gore's presidential campaign in 2000. She was the acting chair of the DNC from July of 16 through November. But then her book came out. The title is Hacks, the inside story of the break-ins and breakdowns that put Donald Trump in the White House. Among other things, she says the DNC colluded with the Hillary campaign to effectively rig the primaries of last year. Plenty of professional Democrats, including CNN President Jeff Zucker, have been enraged by that charge and sought to undermine her credibility as a result. What does she have to say in response? Donna Brazil joins us tonight. Donna, thanks for coming on. Hey, Tucker, you know, what a great honor to be with you tonight after the Democrats did so well across the country yesterday. So I'm yes, excited to be here, excited about what happened in Virginia and New Jersey, and excited to talk to you about my new book, Hacks. Let me just say this uh, up front. <laughs> wait, wait, wait a second. Let me ask you a question. Congratulations on your party success last night, by the way. Thank but you. But let me just ask you this. I've been watching, because I've known you a long time, and I've, <laughs> and I've watched you work for more than 20 years. And I, I'm watching people who know you well, journalists and Democratic Party officials, go after you. And the one thing I notice is that the attacks all sound the same. And my guess, and I, I want to ask you as a professional political person, it seems obvious that there was coordination, that someone's doing oppo on you in response to your book. Who do you think that is? You know, Tucker, I don't really have time to figure out who is spending, uh, I, I'm sure, some much-needed money that needs to go to Democratic candidates next year uh, to figure out what I said in this book is, is factually correct. I, I want to tell you, I, I, I wrote up front, I wanted to write this book to tell my story. I wanted to, the American people to see what happened. I became chair of the party for the second time in my life because our party was under attack. We were hacked. That's why I was called upon to step up to become chair again. Right. Um, that, that, and I think when you read the book, Tucker, and you, you, you mentioned it, we've known each other a long time, I, and, and we were colleagues once at, at, at CNN. Um, the, the book, is, it's, it's, it, it tells some hard truths. Because as you well know, I'm not just any Democratic uh, operative. I'm an activist. I come from the grassroots. I care about my party. I care about the future of my country and our democracy. And as, as chair of the party, we lost an election last year. Many people thought we were going to win. And so I did a forensic examination of what we did wrong and what we could do better so that we can win elections in the future. Well, that seems like a wise and obvious thing to do. It was an unexpected loss. Why not figure out why it happened? But you're not seeing very many people in your party go along with that course. And instead of listening to your analysis of why Hillary Clinton's campaign failed, they're attacking you and impugning your motives. The Hillary campaign, almost every member of it, released a statement accusing you of buying Russia-fueled propaganda. <laughs> Jeff Zucker, your former boss over at CNN, was enraged when he read the book excerpt that ran in Politico last Thursday. And you're seeing your former colleagues say you're just doing this for the money. Why aren't <laughs> they more willing to listen to the prescription that comes out of this book. Well, first of all, uh, many of those uh, individuals who signed that letter, I know them. I've been in the trenches with them for more than 30 years of my adult life. And if I had to go back in the trenches with them next year, I will go back because I believe in justice and fairness and equality. But I want to tell you, when I became chair, I didn't take a salary from the DNC. I gave up everything. I took a leave of absence from CNN and ABC. The only thing I really went back to was teaching at Georgetown because I love my students and I wanted to be there for them with a historic election on, on, on the horizon. Tucker, I wrote this book because I wanted Democratic activists, rank-and-file Democrats. Those are the people I, I listen to. Those are the people that I respond to. I wanted them to know how hard we worked to elect Hillary Clinton and other Democrats up and down the ticket. We came up short, as you well know, Tucker, less than 80,000 votes short in three states. Then tonight we would be having a different conversation. Right. We, we would be talking about Hillary Clinton's first year in office. Instead, we're talking about you know, how the Democratic Party can come back straight stronger uh, so that we can become more competitive in 2018 and beyond. And what I saw last night, I see a party that is capable of coming back out of the wilderness. I see a party with fresh faces, new blood, new energy, in large part because uh, Tom Perez and Keith Ellison, Karen, and so many other people on the DNC, they are working hard to change things for the country. 
But you haven't mentioned anybody who helped run the Hillary campaign. Robbie Mook, for example, um, would you hire him to run the next Democrats' campaign? Well, you know, Robbie and I are both at Harvard, and one of the things when the Democrats win the popular vote and the Republicans win the Electoral College, people like us get to go up to Harvard and, and take a forensic examination of how we can improve our democracy. I went over to see Robbie last <laughs> week. Uh, look, uh, I have great respect well, for Robbie well, and so, his so team, here's, but I here's was what very he, wait, tough on, on them before you go on, I, I, I was very I, tough well, on I know you were, book. and I want you to see what he's saying about you now on television. Here's part of it. The idea that the DNC could rig a contest, frankly, is laughable. The allegation she's making there simply isn't true. We don't certainly don't recognize the campaign she describes. We also don't recall some of the events uh, she said that happened. I'm sure her publisher put her under a lot of pressure. I wish she just put her foot down and said, no, I'm not going to do this. So he's describing you as a hapless pawn of your publisher. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm the third of nine children. And the one thing my parents taught us was to stand up, fight for ourselves, pray and get up the next day. Here's what I know. I was chair of the party, but more importantly, I was an officer of the DNC. I've been a member of the Democratic National Committee since 1997. I know how things operate. I'm a former chair of the party. So to suggest to anyone that I don't know what I'm talking about, really, I'm not focusing on what Robbie is saying. I am focusing on making sure that grassroots Democrats know that our party is going to become stronger. You have to let these wounds heal. We had a very competitive primary. I don't know when the Republicans will sit down and, and heal their wounds, but we, we are healing our wounds, and we're going to learn how to become a stronger, more effective party in the future. So here's, here's part of what you say about Robbie Mook in the book. You said, I'm quoting, I've worked with men all my life in politics, and I can sense when they get to this point about not being able to deal with a woman. It was not a racial thing, it was a gender thing. Every time you mention that they're trying to shut you down because you're a woman, all these guys are like, no, 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 no. So my question is, did, you're saying you were the victim of sexism from the management of the Hillary Clinton campaign. What was their response when you said, look, don't treat me different because I'm a woman? Well, I, I, it, you know, it, I may, have, I may have also st uh, stated in a book, I think I did in three or four chapters, that it was also generational. Remember, I come from the old school. I come from the school when you have a three-by-five index card. I come from the school, Tucker, that you actually knock on doors, you talk to people, you try to get their support, and then you, then you try to get them out on Election Day. Robbie comes from a school that is a, a, a lot different than the school I, I came from. They do algorithms. They do data modeling. And when I would go come back to... And they uh, do the sexism, too. Too, apparently and, and, from and, and, your book, you know, well, they, they, which is a little weird since Hillary ran a whole campaign on breaking the glass ceiling, and here's the guy running her campaign diminishing you because of your sex. It seems no, ironic, I, I, you maybe. Know, it was dismissive. I, I don't, condescending and dismissive, uh, those are the words I characterize in the book. Because I came back and said, Robbie, I just left Little Haiti. Or, Robbie, I, I was in Cuyahoga County. Or, Robbie, I just left Colorado. And I wanted the campaign to understand that we needed yard signs. We needed radio spots. You know, on August 19th, when, when Donald Trump said, what the hell do you have to lose? He made that comment in front of a black audience. Here I was, the chair of the uh, party, and last time I checked, I am black. And I said, I want to respond. I had to write a column because I didn't control my resources. So I was fighting, Tucker, for what I normally fight for in a, in a, in a campaign, whether I'm a campaign activist or a campaign chairwoman. I am fighting for resources to get our message out because my job was to help elect Hillary Clinton and Democrats from the courthouse all the way up to the United States House and Senate. So, so you have this scene in the book that's been much remarked upon where Hillary's really sick. You say she's overworked and she's got a bronchial infection, maybe pneumonia. And she's so sick that you have this moment where you think maybe we need to replace her. Maybe she won't be able to continue. And that's the point at which you said maybe the vice president uh, would be a, a good replacement. Um, that's such a big deal that it was striking when I read that. I thought, here there are a thousand reporters covering this campaign, and not one of them picked up anything like that, that the candidate's health was that bad, that she was being considered maybe not able to finish? Do you think reporters knew that? How could they not know that? Well, let me just tell you, I had a lot of reporters who were calling my office, calling my home, texting me, sending me emails. In fact, there was a reporter that I mentioned that broke the story to me that she had fainted. 
And I uh, immediately call up to Brooklyn, and I tried to reach uh, people on the road with her to find out if this was a rumor. As you all know, Tucker, with the Russian meddling in our campaign, and yes, it happened, there were so many rumors that you had to debunk. And so by the time I saw the video, when the video went viral, you can imagine what was happening within the Democratic Party, what was happening inside uh, the inner circles. Oh, I remember. And, and, and it, it was, it everything was, was it, fine. It was I remember viral. everything was fine. Every, every five to seven minutes. Hillary is a friend. I cared about her health. Yes, I cared about her campaign, but the last thing I want, I want to know how she was doing. I want to yeah. know if she was okay. That well, is, that, that's why in the book you, you, you read that I suggested that she get some acupuncture because I like acupuncture. It helps me. So let me ask you, fight let me ask you quick, quickly about the Russians. You, you have a lot in the book about that and your concerns um, about hacking uh, the servers over at the DNC. If you believe the Russians did that, why didn't the Democratic National Committee allow the FBI to examine those servers? Why were they given over to a vendor and not the U.S. government's well, investigators? You know, that is a great question. And let me tell you, it's in the book as well. When the DNC officer, who was Debbie Wasserman Schultz, when it was brought to her attention, she immediately reached out to get cybersecurity experts on board. She reached out to a former number three at the FBI who is currently working working with a group, uh, an organization called CrowdStrike. Yes. Uh, along with our cyber attorney, they provided the FBI with everything that they requested. Remember, we were still using our oh, but system. Come on now. Come on uh, now. Tucker, if, if you think of course, so, so bottom line is Debbie, it's Debbie Washington Schultz who made that decision. I think that's the headline here. But if you really think that the intelligence service of a foreign government is breaking into your computers in the middle of a campaign, you want actual federal investigators to get to the bottom of it. We, we but you're wanted, saying we that wanted, she stopped that. No, she did not stop it. She who cooperated. Did? She cooperated. She turned over everything. But Tucker, we were still running a party. We still still had our mainframe, you know, being managed, being remediated. Well, you could and, allow the FBI let me, access to that, Let me just that, tell though. you, we spent over $60,000 to provide the FBI and the government because we wanted their help. Tucker, after I received my FBI briefing in August, do yeah. you know what I wanted to do? I wanted to go over to the Pentagon. I didn't want to go back to the DNC. I wanted somebody to put yellow tape around the DNC. I was scared. We were under attack. And, you know, right. we said, well, I don't know if we were under we, attack or we, not, because federal investigators never had access to, they your, had, to they your had, servers. If you recall, James I Comey, recall. James Comey went on the oath and said that he was able to get everything he needed from the DNC. He doesn't know from that. this credible source. He doesn't know that. But because no, he didn't have access Tucker, to your servers. You shouldn't have said why, that. Why would we hold on to servers that were I don't know the answer to that. I was hoping to get it from you. Well, when I became chair, let me just say this from August. Uh, from the moment I became chair, we cooperated with DHS, FBI, uh, CIA, anyone who would help us. We wanted help. Yeah, but not, because but our not, country, not enough to give them our your service. Country, All right. Our country was under attack, Tuck. It wasn't just so, the Democratic Party. No, our look, I mean, we don't know the answer because Debbie Wasserman Schultz apparently wouldn't turn them over. So a couple we of days ago,